The Tokyo fix occurs at 9.55 a.m. Tokyo time, or at 0.55 UTC time. The interesting thing about this time is that it's one of the most manipulated times of the trading day, particularly on Japanese yen pairs. This academic paper does a pretty good job of, of explaining why this is the case. So I'll leave a link in the description and you can read it at your leisure. But the key points to note are that price spikes are more frequent than the London fixing, customer orders are biased towards buying foreign currencies, and this is predictable, and trading volumes and liquidity concentrate on the USD Japanese yen pair. Let me try to explain why this occurs. Say you're a Japanese importer and you import parts from the US. You need to buy US dollars with your Japanese yen to pay for those parts. And the majority of these orders get transacted at the Tokyo fixed price. The Japanese banks obviously know how much orders are in the book. And this paper states that from the moment of the Tokyo fixing, there is an extreme concentration of trades generating frequent price spikes. And second, in Japanese markets, there is a persistent order imbalance in the direction of excess demand for the US dollar. Because the major customers for fixing transactions are importers rather than exporters. Importantly, each bank can set their own fixing rate based on their own transactions in the forex markets. So if they see a bunch of large orders to buy USD on a particular day, they'll try to drive the fixing price as high as they can. And on these type of days, you'll notice that the price action forms a sort of hump shape where the price will rise into the fix and start to reverse after the fix. Let's head over to CTrader now and see if we can spot some of these humps in the price action. And to make it easier to spot, I'm just going to create a simple indicator to draw a vertical line at the time of the Tokyo fix. All we need to do is use ifbarsindex.opentime dot time of day dot total min it's equals 55 because this is UTC time so that will be 12.55 a.m. Then we can just use chart.draw vertical line to draw the line at that time. And that's it. This indicator is literally just two lines of code. So let's build it and I'm going to put it on the one minute chart on the dollar yen pair. And now we can just scroll back to find our line for the Tokyo fix. So there's our last line and let's just verify that that's 12.55 a.m. Then that's right. I just want to get rid of this bottom indicator box so I'm going to go back to the indicator code and set this is overlay setting to true and once we rebuild it that sh box should go away. Let's just zoom in a little bit and you can quite clearly see that hump in the price action with the banks coming in pushing the price up into the fix and then reversing after the fix and there was about a five pip move on either side for this day. Let's have a look at a few more days And you'll find that it doesn't happen every day, but the pattern does come up quite frequently. And to verify this, what we're going to do next is just pull some one minute data from CTrader and we'll do some basic data analysis in Python. For pulling the data, I'll be using the market data extractor that I showed in a previous episode. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll leave a link here for you. And I also show where to get Python in that same episode. Once the data finishes downloading, I'll just change the file name to usdjpy so it'll be easier to refer to later. And now we can open up our Jupyter Notebook to do some coding in Python. We're going to need two libraries for this, so we'll import pandas and detail, which I also showed in a previous episode, which I'll link here. So first we'll need to bring in the data into a data frame using pd.readcsv and your file path. And here's what the data looks like. We've got our date and open, high, low, close with the volume as well. I'm going to set the index column to date and I'm going to use past dates equal to true so we can use some datetime functions on the index. Now I'm going to add two columns to this data frame to help with our analysis. The first column will be the minute of day and I'll set it to df.index.hour so you'll see how it works. So if we have a look at our data frame now, you can see the minute of day column and you can see it's returning the hour of that line. So to get the minute of day, all we need to do is multiply the hour by 60 and at plus df.index.minute. 
and there we have it. The next column is going to be pips and that will show the number of pips moved for each minute bar. And we can just get that using the close price minus the close price of the previous row. And multiplied by 100 for this dollar yen pair. Cool, now we're all set to do some charting. So let's use detail.show to open this data frame in detail. And let's go to charts. Let's create a bar chart with minute of day on the X axis and volume on the Y axis. And we'll set aggregation to mean to get the average volume. Cool, so we just created a chart that shows the average volume for each minute of the day for the dollar yen over the last 10 years. And this is a pretty interesting chart to study because you can see the regular spikes in volume, which show the important times of the day, such as the fixing times. But you also see spikes at the start of each hour, each half an hour bar, each 15 minute bar. And these are caused by algos operating on these time frames. Let's zoom into this first big spike here. And we can clearly see this is the spike for the Tokyo fix, which slowly increases from the 50th minute of the day and peaks on the 55th minute of the day. Let's zoom out now and I'll show you another cool feature. We can actually set animate by date yearly. And that allows us to analyze this chart for different years using this scroll bar. This is very handy to check whether market conditions have changed if you think your algo is losing its edge over time. But what's interesting is that even in the current year, we can still see that large spike in activity around the Tokyo fix, which suggests to me that there are quite a few algos out there trying to take advantage of this effect. You can also do things like grouping by the hour and that will color code each hour with a different color. And that allows you to see the different spikes at the start of each hour, like I mentioned earlier. But what we're really interested in is whether there's any persistent price movements so instead of the volume, let's now have a look at the average pip movement for each bar. I've just gone back to resample the data frame to 5 minute bars to make it easy to see. But check this out, in the 5 minutes before the Tokyo fix, you have this massive positive bar. Which confirms what the academic paper was saying, where you tend to see an appreciation of the US dollar prior to the fix. Followed by a reversal after the fix. And we tend to see US dollar depreciation throughout the Asian trading session. So one simple strategy you can try is to just sell the dollar yen at 9.55 AM and hold it for a couple of hours to capture all these negative bars. If you've watched all my previous videos, you should be able to code this up quite easily. So feel free to pause here and have a go at it. Otherwise, if you're new to my channel, then keep watching and I'll show you how to code it up in Ctrader with about five lines of code. Let's create a new bot and I'll call it Tokyo Fix. And then in the on bar section, we'll use if server.time.timeofday.totalminutes equal 55. So on the 55th minute of the day in UTC time, we want to execute market order with a trade type of sell on the current symbol name. I'll just put 100,000 for one lot. Give the trader label of Tokyo fix and I'll leave the stop loss and take profit as null for this example. So this spot will now sell one lot every day at exactly 12.55 a.m. UTC time. We do want to close the trade at some point. So let's use if server.time.timeofday.totalwins equals 360. So holding it for five hours. Then we can loop through the positions using for each position P in positions. We want to close position P. And I'll just add another condition to check that positions count is greater than zero. Otherwise it might throw an error. And that's it. Now the bot will just open a sell trade at 9.55 AM each day, hold it for five hours and then close it out. Let's test it out now by creating an instance on the dollar yen on the one minute time frame. 
And I'll just also load the Tokyo Fix indicator that we created earlier so we can see when that occurs in the visual backtest. And here we can see the Tokyo Fix bar and when the bot sold one lot on that bar as we expected. Let's let it run for a bit and it should close out the position after 5 hours. And there we have it. Cool, now let's see how it performed over the last 10 years. Not too bad, right, for such a simple strategy for just selling and holding for a few hours. There are plenty of ways that you can improve on this strategy. Try looking at stop losses and take profits. Maybe try optimizing the entry and exit times or using filters to only execute on certain days and test it out on the other Japanese yen pairs and it should work on those as well. I'll be sharing a version of the bot which I've made a few simple tweaks to try to smooth out the equity curve a bit. And that will be available on the Google Sheets workbook for members to access. And I'll be adding more bots and useful tools to the sheet over time so definitely go and check it out.